Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Victoria 2 as Italy. In our last episode we have been making preparations to start our invasion of Japan in order to hopefully finish this war that we are in in a reasonable amount of time. We do have a small amount of war score from the first battle there. Um, we have our troops loaded into transports over here so they're ready to go. Let's get them at least as far as here for the moment. Also, last episode we had a quick war against Austria-Hungary. They attacked us to try and take Croatia back, but we pieced them out for a white piece after winning quite a few battles. We didn't really want to get involved in a longer war with them. We should probably actually start spending more on naval units since I imagine Japan has at least some kind of a fleet we might need to be concerned about. 57 ships and 23 tech, so probably a fairly decent fleet. We'll want to make sure that we protect our transports. We do have one more transport that we missed, but that's okay. take a few more troops down here in case we need to transport a second wave over we are going to want to transport some across to Persia at some point probably since that's where our war goal is Okay, we'll go as far as here, I suppose, for the moment. If I had more patience, I would micromanage it a bit better and make sure that my combat fleet stayed ahead of my transports, but I do not. Alright, we do have a tiny invasion here from Dynam. Uh, let's send our older fleet to see if we can catch these transports, which still appear to be using sails and not steam. Cat and Mouse Act. The so-called Cat and Mouse Act was an infamous British law passed in 1912 in order to combat the suffragette tactic of using hunger strikes as a means to build sympathy for the suffragette cause. So we can have pops in Auvergne gain militancy or liberals gain consciousness which I think is what we will choose to do. Yep, that was no problem. We have killed all of the ships. Ooh, and we have a small fleet from China over here. We'll try and catch them as well. Which we did. That was transports too. So our transports are over here, we'll send our combat fleet in this direction. And actually, since we're here, why don't we put in in Johor to get rid of our time at sea penalty, which we can't actually see here because we're in coastal water waters, but we're probably getting. And we'll have you come in here and you come in here. Okay, so Send you up to here to scout the way. Oh, we have another Japanese army over here. Which we will deal with the same way we dealt with the last one.
Okay, we won that battle, wiped out the army. And there is a reasonably sized Chinese and Japanese fleet here, which actually... I never know which order these numbers in. I don't, are in. I don't know if the third number is the transports. It seems like it should be, since that's the order it is here, but I kind of have a feeling it's different. It seems like they are trying to catch me in here. And they're going to, so I guess we'll see how this battle goes. Seems to be reasonably well so far. Okay. So we lost one ship to their 44. Seems a pretty good ratio there, I think. And we can pass universal voting. So, why not? Okay, this fleet is apparently not moving to engage us, so we will leave it alone. And we have an election starting. Alright then, let's land our troops, I suppose. Hopefully get some sieges done quickly so that we can put our ships into port. We are taking just the 2% attrition here, so that is fine. We'll continue supporting the fascist party, I guess, since that has been working out okay for us. No protectionism there. I never know where the straight crossings are here. Are we going to have to go through this province? No, apparently not. Okay. Well, I don't think we want to cross a straight to there, though. With that army in the way. That's fine, though, if they want to move. Ooh, it looks like we are getting some reinforcements to this battle. So we may have to just put our troops in here. Don't know how this is going to go, but we'll see, I guess. Looks like they're just going to keep pouring troops into here. So they have us pretty heavily outnumbered, but we have the gas attack on our side. Uh, we are not going to get troops here from Europe in time to actually reinforce this, I think. So we're just going to have to fight with what we have. We got oil-driven ships, I suppose. Well, definitely the ratio of casualties is pretty strongly in our favor. So maybe not quite strongly enough to get us a victory here. I guess we should start sending our ships back just in case they can get there in time. Um, I suppose we'll send them to down here and 
march some troops to meet them. So we are looking for state capitalism here. output efficiency. Uh, tensions in Denmark. I guess we'll assert our position here as well. So we're holding our own in this battle at least. It's not going overwhelmingly in our favor. But hopefully it's good enough. Jingoism is what we want here, so we'll go for as much as we can get. Ships are on their way. It's going to take them a while to get back there. naval organization and glass production. It would be nice if we had a better general here. It would really be swinging things in our favor if we had even just a plus two to balance out theirs. Even a plus one that maybe would be all the difference. Troops in Johor, which we are just going to pay no attention to, basically. A state capitalism is what we want here, but we are only getting interventionism. I think we're just about going to win this battle, but it's going to be pretty close. Assuming that neither of us reinforces it. Which I don't think we're going to be in time to do, and they seem reluctant to reinforce. as far as here, and you to here. And we might actually get troops here in time before the battle is over. Yeah, we're looking for state capitalism. And China is also in Johor. Only with tiny armies, though. And we will encourage Jingoism here. Uh, speaking of Jingoism, I don't think we're really going to want to add any additional war goals to this war. I don't think there's anything we particularly want from any of these people. We'll just liberate Afghanistan and leave it at that. They wouldn't accept at the moment, though we do have the exact amount of war score. If we win this battle, it's probably going to be worth enough war score by itself to make them peace out.
We lost an occupation over there. I guess we could try and transport troops over, but we only have the one transport for now. I think we'll just ignore it. Okay, conservative and reactionary parties got 50.23% of the vote, which is fine with me. So we could stop into port here and... Actually, why don't we stop into port and wipe out these little armies while we're here? Unfortunately, we no longer have the occupied territory, so we can't land our troops directly, but that's all right. Select the actual fleet. And the same there. And we lost a general. Not the general who was in this battle, fortunately. Let our combat fleet get ahead here so that they engage the Japanese fleet. which has conveniently moved away. We probably won't be exercising our repay debt CB against Yemen. And France has declared war on us. Okay, so we're going to have to see them off as well. Okay, let's get these reinforcements into this battle. Which hopefully should be enough to guarantee us the victory here. Let's see, how many troops do we even have left to fight France with? Not that many. We are, of course, pretty far below our supply limit, so we could have been building more troops, but I don't think it's really that necessary. We should be able to hold France off with what we have. Or at least let's hope so. We're going to have to wait for the next episode to find out, though, because we're out of time for now. So thanks for watching, and join me again then.